Cool, cool. So we're going to get it started. Thank you for responding to me on LinkedIn. Uh, this is really exciting. Um, I'm here with my buddy Antonio, and he is a motivational speaker. He uh, does it full time. This is his career, his passion. And I want to help you and help anyone else that's going to be listening to this podcast episode uh, figure out what steps they can take to start their career in speaking. Uh, this is going to be for my newest podcast, the Urban Entrepreneur Radio Podcast, which uh, I'm hosting on a weekly basis with my partner, C. Sandy Martin. And this section right here is the Sharp Shooters Consulting Session. So you're going to be the first episode, Amy, for the Sharp Shooters Consulting Session. So thank you for being a participant. We're excited. That's super exciting. Thanks for inviting me. Right, no problem. So uh, just uh, let me allow Antonio to introduce himself, and then we'll jump right into it. Hi, Amy. Where are you Hi. calling us from? Um, from Barcelona. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Okay. Um, well, we are here in New Jersey, right by across from Manhattan. Um, I'm a motivational speaker, and what I do is I travel throughout the United States and I train companies on how to manage their people. And then I also give motivation to different universities, small companies on just how to live happier lives and more fulfilled lives. Um, and that's kind of a gist of my business. Uh, I've been in business since 2009 um, and we, we're doing pretty well. We're pretty excited for where we are. So um, we're excited to talk with you too and answer any questions you have. Great, thank you. Oh yeah, that's why I got this guy on the call because he is our expert when it comes to public speaking. And I'm going to just help facilitate the conversation. We're going to learn a lot about you. And we're going to see what steps that you can take to get you started in your journey to be a public speaker. So uh, at this point, tell us a little bit about yourself, Amy, and we can dive right into it. Oh, wow. <laughs> OK, well, I'm studying for a master's right now in science and business. And nice. I did a year in a science lab uh, working for a pneumonia vaccine. And now I'm in a big corporate business called SAP, which sells software around the world. And nice. uh, it's as big as Microsoft. And I'm working as a sales operations intern, looking at how to motivate people in the team and incentivize them, doing sort of internal communications and analyzing their targets. But for me, like, now I've lived in other cultures. That's been the most insightful experience for me. And the, the psychology and the things you learn in this new perspective and hearing from people with, from different lives and environments. Uh, I grow magnificently and I, I see things from my society and different societies that no longer bother me or they were issues before in my life and no longer I want to be free from them and live a life important for me. Yeah. And I, I, I want to in my life be able to actually communicate um, in an engaging way in a digestible way for listeners about like the future problems of the of the world and also the life just life lessons you know like the things you wish that in school uh, someone taught you and uh, your teachers or your parents didn't and yet you have to learn them in the big scary world where you were previously protected i think it's really important to be more transparent and equip children and people with the right tools and things to be able to go out there in life and actually achieve their dreams and not letting failure and these things set them back, but actually being inspired and inspirational as well and, and start seeing the bigger picture and not being stuck inside their minds kind of thing. <laughs> I see you, you have a lot and you have a lot to offer as well. It's going to be exciting when it's time for you to tell your story. So, quick question for you. At what point or at what stage would you consider yourself a public speaker or what point have we you know started talking to you in your journey so i haven't like done public speaking events per se but of course i do presentations in the company and things like this so i'm quite attuned with how to make an exciting or thought-provoking presentation that you have to try and engage different types of audiences but i haven't gone ahead and been in a public speaking event where I'm talking about something very personal and um, being confident enough to inspire them. Like I just haven't even, I don't even know where you would start to look for an event where you think you're worthy of talking and, and what to even <laughs> say, like how, how much of your own story should you say or what should you inspire the world with, like what, where should you start? I don't know. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's perfect. Uh, at, at any point, 
you know, it's, it's important that you understand that everyone has to start somewhere and you already have some experience in speaking. Now you just have to kind of utilize those skills in a different platform. So my, my question, my first question would be, what is your biggest pain point or what's the most uh, pressing issue that's stopping you from starting at this point? But now it's completing my master's degree. I mean, well, <laughs> often when, you, when you're doing a lot of education, also you don't have time to think for yourself and you're sort of on this trajectory where you want to get this goal in life and it's suited for you because it's suited to your studies and your knowledge. But mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I never questioned that moment where, but do I enjoy this? Like, do I really want to do this? Yeah. Am I making the right impact in the world that I want to make? And then I started to realize, okay, well, I'm on this master's course. I'm learning a lot about the world, good and bad things. And it's not that I want to stop and start my next journey, which is the next part. I do want to finish it because I want to, you know, have something under my belt and also show, like, that I actually have the knowledge and the experience, even though it's not the right one for me, being able to learn more about what I don't like doing is also important as well. So like I'm going to complete the master's degree and that's the thing that's stopping me because I have to prioritize this. But I graduate mm -hmm. for, at the end of the year and then, then it's finished and then I plan to start. Right. But also I just don't know what, whether yeah, so I want I to have... go straight to a career of public speaking or if I want to do some more studying into psychology and you know more voice and language uh, courses and things like this before. Cool. So I have two, I have two things that I want to kind of point out. Well, the first thing is that you're saying that you're, you're waiting till you finish your master's to kind of start or, or figure that side out. I think the important thing, especially if for motivational speaking is that your journey now is part of your content for what you're going to be speaking about. So even as you're going through your master's program, there's specific things that while I, somebody may not be in a master's program, there's things that they might be able to relate to. Right. So, working really late or going to work and then going to school or you know just working hours that most people don't work so that in itself is already content that you're building now you just have to formulate it as an idea does that make sense yeah that's good so like even though i'm doing something a bit different still keep that visioning goal and start taking little bites of yeah. of your life at yeah. that moment to help you in this future direction that you do want to go yeah because you know honestly i think you I, I started my company when I was finishing my master's program. And one of the things that was important for me was I wanted to finish it because I need, I wanted that degree so I can get into corporate America to gain the experience to become a speaker. Um, so in my mind, that's where my direction was. But I also realized that my motivational speaking content started the day that I was born. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And it's because when you start speaking to audiences, you're relating to them on so many different levels that it's not just about professionalism or happiness it's about the rawness of who you are and what you're willing to share with that audience and so I, I, I can i completely completely agree and i think like yeah one of the best speaking things is to be able to engage in the audience and feel like you're one of them like you're one of the humans you have the same issues going on like being able to relate and engage is something that everyone can then start like being engaged in you and listening to their parts of them that that they see in you and I think authenticity is yeah one of the best things and of course I agree with you my journey starts here look I haven't finished my master's degree and I'm learning about it tonight when it's half 10 in Barcelona <laughs> yeah nice. on a Wednesday it's all, it's all about storytelling you know how you're going to connect with your audience really depends on how open you are to connect with them and tell your story don't be afraid to let it all out like really put it all on the table because you never know what parts of your story resonates with the audience that you're speaking to. So it's important to just, you know, do not be afraid to share yourself. Do not think that, oh, there's a one way to, to do this, to I have to hit these X, Y, and Z points in my speech. Like, no, you really can just go out there, be yourself, speak on your experiences, speak on what you know, and just be real, be Amy. And that's how you build a successful speaking business. And that, yeah, and I really like, love that advice, especially like what I've noticed is if you can be yourself, you don't even need to prepare the speech. It just sort of flows. It's you, it's what you want to express, it's what you want to say. Like you're in the moment and it's what you want to do. It's where you want to be, it's where you want to inspire. And yeah, if you can just be yourself without worrying about anything, you can just be in that moment and be yourself and 
inspire in ways that you didn't think you could because you'll be touching things that by just being yourself in people that they might have not even noticed that they had inside. I don't know. No, you're 100% right. And, and, I, and I'd also add this in there. And I did this because in my mind, I knew that this was going to be my life path. Um, so I started thinking about how can I connect with people in, in very genuine ways. And I'd recommend this for you. And I recommend this to all speakers that want to be in the motivational speaking side is the days that you're having like really bad days, turn your camera on and just talk to the camera. Oh, wow. Now it doesn't mean that you're going to share it, but it means that when you become big, then you can say, Hey guys, let me tell you about that. You know, on September 22nd, you saw me post, go after your dreams. You could take over the world, all these things, but let me show you a video that I made September 21st. And now it's like your audience is like, Whoa, wait, Amy, she's awesome. She's amazing. She's confident. She's, she believes in herself. Wait, the day before that she was stressing out. She was crying in her bathroom or whatever it is. But, um, I did that and, and I, and I still have those, but I look back on those for, for reassurance that I'm on the right path, but you never know what clips you might be able to grab from that because social media is just an, an amazing avenue for it that at some point it might, you know, it might, show your genuineness and i don't i'm not telling you to cry on camera <laughs> man, I, I cry on camera i, I would ask for that and say man record those videos and put it up those, those if your parents see them those are the ones that are going to resonate because it's real you're not putting on a facade your real emotions are coming out and that's what's going to resonate with people people are people of course of course people i think it's, it's so important, important to actually be genuine yeah the things that you're afraid to share is the things that they're afraid to share as well so if you're bold exactly. enough to put things out that's what's going to resonate with them they're going to remember that you was the one that put out the content that touched my heart and allowed me to that's feel the activity yes yes you're so right <laughs> like don't be afraid that's those are the videos that like you don't do it to go viral, but those are the ones that go viral. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, really practice makes perfect. Even practice speaking. I mean, I didn't. I thought about it, but I didn't do it. But it is, and it actually makes you reflect on your own like day and things just by going through the process. It's quite therapeutic yourself. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah. But how do you have enough storage? Where do you put your videos? <laughs> My well, laptop would run out of storage. <laughs> It was, it was, I'll tell you this, we were just talking about this. So he uses uh, Google Drive. I had to get Dropbox because I make so many videos that I, some of them that I never even post, but one day those messages might be in line with my strategy to how I'm getting, trying to reach my audience, but I have everything stored on there. And every once in a while, I just go back to listen to it because I may not have been able to articulate. <laughs> That's so clever. <laughs> And I haven't, and, and, and this is another tip that I'll tell you is sometimes I can't fully articulate my ideas in a nice, clean, and, you know, short way, but I'll just exactly. record. I have this issue as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, just record, just keep on recording. And I also have a voice recorder and my friends make fun of me because they say like, I'm like, yeah, I act like I'm like born in the fifties, <laughs> but like I have a voice recorder. So sometimes I'll just record my thoughts and, or like I'll see something that inspires me and I'll just be like, Hey, have you ever considered this? And I think of different analogies and metaphors that kind of inspire me throughout the day that I can use in the future. So, so when I go back, um, I can kind of, I like your mindset. It's the same, like you're analyzing things and you come up with new solutions and it, for me, this is this whole psychology aspect, and I think it's so important to be able to connect and realize what behaviors are happening, and and also yeah. being able to, yeah, have this whole storage of your own experiences, so that for you, you can easily relate and that find ways to articulate yourself and the new things that you've learned, and and yeah, that's very powerful because of course sometimes you have a message and it is so much easily explained with an anecdote or a little analogy or a metaphor. And you can't quite pinpoint which one you can use to really get that feeling across. But yeah, if you have it all there, it's, I, it's so transformative. And it doesn't matter if you never use it. There will be one there that you use that, that can make your day and save you from that like mental torment. That's like, how can I make this message and get it in a way? Because it's so, like one of my Italian friends said that, of course, when you think of it like this and you want to inspire, it's very hard to, to get in, engaged with someone and the Italian phrase says that you can never wash a donkey so like no matter how mm -hmm. much you try and wash and try and get the idea in their head they're still going to be deaf they're still not going to understand so yeah by having like these ways of actually getting inside or cleaning the donkey or whatever whatever you want to say that the way to get the idea across is very powerful and yeah I think it's a great idea to 
start collecting the little bits because I'm learning things every day and I want to share and sometimes I forget what thoughts I've learned that now tra transform my life without thinking and I wish I had that chance to explain that lesson I learned to that friend at that moment as well like not even in public speaking just in your life like when you come across these issues every day and you've gone through them yourself and you want to you want to show people that even everyone's going through fear everyone's going through crazy ideas they're all authentic and we all have our own brains going crazy like but we should be allowed to actually express it and feel it and share these amazing ideas to the world and yeah I, I think it's it's really just important that you document I want to give you a really quick example I remember a long time ago I kept thinking to myself the moment that I've seen somebody else be successful somebody like really accomplishing a lot once I've seen that like I can't unsee it and we've heard that right and so yeah. I remember that. And then one day, like this quote, it, like literally, I was thinking about the idea of once I see something, I can't unsee it. And then a quote came out of my mouth and I was like, I have to write this down. But I came up with the idea of a mind that has been expanded can never return to its original form. Wow. And it literally like clicked. But that was an idea that I had like five or six years ago. And so I, I that's why I just recording your thoughts really helped. Here's another tip. And I... <laughs> there's times that I'll be out, let's say if I'm at a networking event or I go out with my friends and we've had a few cocktails <laughs> and I, I'm not supporting the cocktails, but just the idea that sometimes I'll have a few cocktails or I'm traveling by myself and I'm having dinner by myself and I have a few cocktails and my mind just starts going off in like these crazy directions. Mm -hmm. I'll record my thoughts. And, and the reason why is because I think some of my, my most vivid ideas come and I'm just like, I just start recording. Like, oh. And sometimes I'll just make a video and I'm not posting I did this three hour like texting, like note paragraph about all these thoughts I was having and maybe it was like five to seven in the morning, but my thoughts were taking over my sleep and I got it all down and I haven't looked at it yet, but I know it was very like deep and I couldn't stop thinking about this issue and I felt comfortable thinking about it. I was in a moment where I didn't mind what time it was. I just wanted to experience what was going on and what I was feeling and thinking and getting it down and yeah I think the recording thing is way better because it's not often that I have the time just to take note of my thoughts and the recording it's down it's efficient it's quick I would say find out what works for you because I'm on the exact opposite I take a lot of notes I have the Google Keep app and that thing is so packed with notes about every little thing I do in my life as soon as it comes to my mind it goes into my Google Keep and that's how I document everything I do and all my thoughts because once it leaves your mind, it's so hard to get back. But once it comes into your mind and you put it on paper or put it into your, your, your note app or whatever you have or record it, that's when it's like, all right, you can refer to it and it's time to utilize that knowledge or wisdom that you thought about. So that way it doesn't go wasted and you can use it in any aspect of your life that you, know, you can see is going to be beneficial to you or yourself or exactly. someone else or the content that you're going to produce or your speaking career. Yeah. You know, gotta be able to, Especially to on the bad keep. days, I think. That's the best days to get it done because then when you see how you go from those days to the next days and the next days, then you can also share with people, like, it's okay to have a bad day. Like, look what I learned from yeah. my bad day. And now look how good it is. Like, yeah. it's part of life. Yeah. Don't let it get you down. And, and this is what helped me in the same time that I felt like that. And you've got it all documented. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll add on this for, for getting people to resonate with your message as well. Um, you know, you're recording it, but when, if you ever get the opportunity to speak to people, you know, if, and the idea that I would throw to you is, you know, you're talking about being in your master's program, the challenges and all those things. When you're thinking of the concept of the struggles that you're having in your master's program, I may not have got, I may have not achieved my master's degree or gone to college. So how do you take an idea or a concept that is relative to what you went through and make that applicable across everybody in, in any way that they can connect it? So I, I challenge you to think about that as well, because if, if you're talking about your master's degree, people may not have attained that, but everybody has worked late nights. Everybody has put in endless hours. So you take your idea, but you have to connect it to everybody. If you have mothers in the audience, you know, the late nights that you're staying up with the baby crying or trying to train them, that's, so just connect the ideas. And that's, a, a, you were talking earlier about connecting with the audience. That's a very important thing too, so. Well, Amy, at this point, I, wanna, I wanna dive into some key or some uh, realistic action items because we could talk about this stuff all we want, but until there's some actual action based on what we talked about, 
nothing is is valuable or nothing even even matters so let's let's figure out some action steps that we can have well, you know, i've already done some action steps so i'm part okay. through the process okay, so but i did myself you, make a google drive step? i did myself do a google drive and um a youtube account and whenever i find a ted talk or some some content that i wish i could share with someone or something or or do a lesson on or, or a workshop I have like philosophy, psychology, education, all these different folders and I just put it in and I'm there, they're there to one day maybe make something from it, a lesson plan or a workshop. Okay. At the, spread these videos so, that transform so. my life, the ideas that someone else has spoken for me. Like what's the crazy thing is someone's obviously out there already had the idea for me. It's crazy when you watch a TED talk and they're thinking basically the same thing and you just want to get your idea out and someone's got it out but they haven't reached a bigger audience enough. And like I save all these little things that help me and that I also believe in and I've put them all now in, in folders so that one day I can make some sort of structured program where people can look on the internet or something where they can go into these sections and transfer life. Let, let, let that be today where you dig deep into that content that you already recorded and start putting stuff out there and making new content to supplement it as well and, and to add on to your story because even if you have one viewer one person that can grasp what you're saying and get value out of it that's important enough you can change the life of, of one person by just yeah you know, that's so amazing and that's what what? Is the most important. What? About getting a million views or, or touching a million people if you can get one person to hear your story and be moved by it, that's all that's important in my opinion. I have you know, to say, I want to say in my own experience, I completely agree. For me, what I notice is if to even if I meet a homeless person or someone who's crying on the metro, if I can make their day the best day and give them a hug or some money to go home, even if I've made one person say that much, but it is nothing from me. It was nothing. And the feeling I get is amazing. So it's true. People shouldn't be looking at the lights and all this. These are the dopamine stimulations in your brain that you get addicted to. Remember the perspective. You've made the difference in one person's life. Like, that's incredible that you've reached and connected to someone in the world who you've been able to make an impact and make their life a little bit better. I mean, we should, you know, be grateful for all these small things. And that's really transformative if you've been able to do that. So it's good that you say that. And, like, yeah, it shouldn't be about, like, likes and popularity. You should just be, like, focusing on your own dreams and, and see it all just happen in front of your eyes without worrying about setbacks. And if you can make the difference to one night, it starts spreading, you know, the ripple effect. If one person then they tell someone else, it will be okay. <laughs> You'll make an impact, even even no matter how small it is, that's it. We, every, if everyone did something little and little, the world would be a better place. I agree, definitely. It all comes back around. You know, like, it, it's something about the world and the universe that when you put out good, Good just comes right back to you. And it I'm does. Just, it does. It's crazy. I'm, I'm glad, glad you see I'm this. I'm <laughs> blessed. I've been blessed. And I, you know, I just try to pay forward for my content, with helping other people out with mentoring and helping, you know, youth and doing other things that I see is adding value to this world. So you, you're going to do the same. You're going to do great. You're going to touch the lives of many people. And I can hear it already that you're very passionate about what you want to do with your speaking career. And you're going to make it happen. Just put in the work and believe in yourself, and I guarantee good things are going to happen. Thank you. <laughs> you have any uh, closing remarks? Um, I mean, I, I, I think I would just say that, first off, there's no qualifications to be a motivational speaker. Um, there's no training that you go through. It's really just taking the risk and putting yourself out there. And just remember that not everybody will understand what you're trying to do. Um, not everybody exactly. will be supportive. Not everybody will be supportive of what you're trying to do, especially your parents. Uh, <laughs> and just know that when you join the club, <laughs> <laughs> just know that when you start, what you have to really do is just every day. I, I say this a lot. Like I have to refocus myself a lot because if I, if I have a message that I want to share with everybody, I know what my message is and I can't let that be influenced by other people's opinions. Uh, so, uh, you know, just take the risk. Don't, be careful of who you get confirmation from, affirmation from, because some people won't be able to provide it to you, but don't let that stop you. And just well, do it. What I learned, what I learned is that like, 
why should you wait around maybe waiting for that other person to give you validation just give yourself the validation you ever needed and you're there like you've given yourself that feeling you've been craving from anyone else you can give it to yourself your mind is yours you have the same chemical makeup you know don't care about anyone else think about yourself what you are believe and you don't need to worry about anyone else's opinion just just go for it and don't don't get knocked down because who are they to say what their opinion like what their opinion clearly doesn't matter to you because your opinion is so much better than theirs they just don't get it and rise just, above it and don't pity yeah. them don't feel sorry for them just be happy that they that they're living their life in the way that they they see it themselves like we, we all live our lives and we have different goals and we're different people and yeah of course we can't touch it but we should never let those people get us down because they they're not in our lives. They don't mean things to us. We we have the people around us who support us, and that's what's special for us. And the people who understand, that's what we live for. And not everyone. You can't do it. And even in business, you can't sell a product to everyone. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I, I think you have the right idea. Just stick with it. I, I'd love to see what 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 becomes of Amy. I, I'd, I'd, yeah. love to, I'd love to follow you. You're a big time public speaker. We're going to fly out to yeah. Barcelona. We're going to be front row center. <laughs> we're going to be oh, you. you can start my career here. Let's just go to the park and preach. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about. That's the spirit. So happy for you to be on the call with us on the Sharp Shooters Consulting Session. Um, you've been great. We are very happy to have you and we look forward to engaging with you on various platforms, LinkedIn, any other social media you have. I, oh I yeah, be in please, touch. Please, you look that'd be amazing. And thanks for all your Thank advice. You so for you've, like you've given me so many ideas amazing. where I can oh, now fine. progress where I, where I am at the moment, and you gave me some great confidence, which is really, really lovely. So thank you for all your advice and good words and your <laughs> energy. Well and I'm glad that you've never given up. And look, look, even the place you are in, nice. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm proud of you. Take it, take it easy. Yeah, connect with me. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.